Christ is risen. It is Friday and um, we have decided that we are going to try to post something for you twice a week. Something a bit more serious on a Tuesday and something a bit more personal and intimate in a way on the Fridays following the comments that you've left on the video we have just posted. I remember going and visiting so many of your parishes, giving retreats and small talks and conferences, and the best part of all those retreats um, was not me just endlessly talking to you, but me answering your questions, because there was a um, back and forth sort of conversation that was initiated, and in response to that conversation, God gave me things to say that I wouldn't have thought about before. It becomes relevant and personal and useful, and that's, that's all I hope from these videos. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all the donations you've sent our way. Every single one of them is received with gratitude and we pray for you. These small donations of yours are supposed to replace our summer pilgrimages and all my retreats to the United States. So thank you very much for the support you're offering. This Tuesday, we posted a video about patience and the effects impatience and disobedience have had on humanity since the time of Adam to our own experience today as we are locked down everywhere in the world. And we've received quite a number of good, very good comments uh, in response to that video. And you can see all of them uh, if you access that particular film. But there is one I would like to address in this video today because it is very important and it is something I have personally struggled with and I feel I have something to offer in response to that. Um, thank you to everyone who posted comments. They, they really mean a lot because they show us that what we do touches you and has an effect. But it is the comment of Chris I would like to address. Chris says, Father, does patience mean we don't do anything we don't practice our will, our ideas, while we wait patiently for something to become obvious or for something that God will just eventually make happen? Or does it mean that we keep on doing the same things until God moves us along? And I can sense the tension in this question and I can sense that there is something of belonging to real life behind this question. So I would like to address this one at this time. I feel that there are two parts to the question, one which is more practical and the other one which is a bit more theoretical but very important spiritually. I will address the practical one first just in case we get bored with this video and I want you to take something useful uh, after we've invested two minutes watching it. What do you do when you are stuck in the middle of the road? What do you do when you are at a crossroad with one or two or three or four options around you, all of which could affect greatly your life? Which way do you turn? And I have been in that situation. I have been in that situation really two or three major times in my life. And every time I've gone through something like this, Patience was immensely helpful. And I will give you one example. It was, I think, 2011, 2012, when I had to make a choice regarding my own life. I was in Durham at the time, studying for my PhD at the university there. And there were a few options, a few avenues opening up to me. I could have gone back to my monastery in Moldavia at the end of my PhD. I could have finally found a community on the Holy Mountain, which is something I had been dreaming of since I was a young novice. I could have continued on the path of establishing and founding the community on the Isle of Mull, or I could have gone to North America, to a small monastery in the Rocky Mountains. I had no clear understanding about the way and the direction God wanted me to take. So I went to my spiritual father and I asked him the question, 
these are the options put before me and I have no clear understanding about the way to go forward. And what he told me surprised me initially. Um, and it still surprises me thinking back. It surprises me less now because I've seen it working and because it works, it became a bit more acceptable to me. What he told me at the time was to say yes to everything. He said, say yes to everything. In your heart, say yes. Say yes to the people who are involved and do not refuse anything. As long as you do not know which way God wants you to go forward, make sure you do not reject his will. So just say yes to everything and then continue with patience to pray. Continue to pray for his will to be revealed to you. And what will happen, he told me, is that every single door that was not opened by God will be closed. Every single option that does not come out of God, that is not God's will for me, if I approach this prayerfully and with patience, will just wither away and die until one option, one option only will be left. And that is exactly what happened. One by one, for various reasons, all the other alternatives to the monastery on the Isle of Mull have become impossible and I had to abandon them. Until all that was left before me was the calling to found this monastery dedicated to the Celtic saints uh, to the west of Scotland in the Hebrides. So I have seen in my own life that God loves me enough to keep knocking at my door for weeks and months and years, whereas the temptations that come from the devil will wither away and die because the devil does not have the love and he doesn't have the interest really in me the way in which Christ, my Creator, loves me and he takes an interest in me. The evil one will get bored sooner or later and his temptations, the false avenues that he opens up before us, will just be closed, just like my spiritual father told me, doors being closed after they had been opened because they were not opened by God. So practice patience in that sense, yes. Say yes to everything and pray your heart out, patiently waiting for the evil one to lose interest and for the loving one, our loving God, to keep on knocking until his knocking is the only sound you hear. And there was a second aspect to this question, the question of whether or not we use our will or whether or not we use our ideas in order to be patient. And I think there's a misunderstanding there. There's a misunderstanding that somehow spiritual practices, spiritual virtues, such as patience or obedience, prayer even, uh, definitely silence and definitely solitude, there's a misconception that they are passive approaches to life, passive answers to the life around us. I think that's why many people condemn monasticism, for instance, because they perceive it as just abandonment, a sort of spiritual laziness, if you want to call it that way. We're just running away from the world. We are hiding somewhere far, far away so that we don't have to deal with the world. When in fact, as you can learn these days and weeks of being stuck inside, all these spiritual virtues require every single ounce of will and strength and emotional intelligence and mental intelligence that we have in order to survive. In order to be patient, you have to make the decision again and again and again, not to explode, not to react. In order to be obedient and to keep yourself within a monastic community, you have to make that decision. You have to renew that promise to yourself and to Christ every single morning, every single time somebody steps on your wheel and crushes it down. You have to renew that promise that you have made to Christ himself, that you are going to stick to that life. You are going to allow obedience to kill you 
for this world to kill you for this life so that the world to come, the life to come, will be yours. It is a paradox that something that uses up your entire energy and exhausts you with how intense it can become. It is a paradox that this experience from the outside looks very passive because it is indeed much more visible when we are reactive beings, when we respond to everything, when we kick back, when we explode. That is a visual spectacle and we perceive that as being active, whereas to keep yourself under control, to use your strength, your inner abilities and your will, your again emotional intelligence and your mental intelligence to keep yourself under control, that is not visible from the outside. There's an entire spectacle, there's an entire explosion going on on the inside of one's soul, as I'm sure you've experienced these past few weeks, but nothing is seen from the outside. So people perceive these spiritual experiences as being just passive attitudes, when in fact they are draining and exhausting, but so worth it. I will finish here because I do want these Friday videos to be just the simple ways in which we can communicate, simple ways in which we at least mimic that we are together. Keep your spirits up. Do not allow this experience to sadden you. Do not allow depression or despondency to take over you. Try to not get dispirited. Try to do something small to keep yourself going and to help someone else. The more we help each other, the easier the way out of this situation will be. And a way to help us at the monastery is obviously to share these videos of ours with your friends and to subscribe and to leave comments so we can have more videos to record. But also, if it at all possible, please make a small donation that will support us through this year that has left us with no financial support. Or, just so you don't think that we are being completely passive, we have started making these prayer ropes for you. And they are entirely made by us at the monastery. They are made of black wool from our um, evil-looking black Hebridean sheep, which I also mentioned in another video. And um, because we have no real bubbles, you know, to separate the parts, we are using shells, which we collect from the shores um, of the Isle of Mull, and we just, um, yeah, we make this for you. So if you'd like one, if you need one, or if you'd like a gift for someone, this is when I'm advertising uh, our own products. Thank you. It is weird how comfortable I feel to ask for your help. And I think that is because I trust you. I have seen how much you can help us through these years. And um, I perceive you as friends and benefactors, even if all you do is keep us in your prayers and send us from time to time a small word of encouragement. We all need encouragement. May God bless us all. Christ is risen.